Welcome to Book Launch, the UK's most widely distributed books magazine for all intellectual interests. And in this podcast, we're asking, when it comes to women's fashion, is the age of revelation over? For a century or more, fashion designers have created styles that revealed the female body, idealising it, favouring the young, and putting pressure on anyone whose body image felt less than perfect. Now, stylists are creating fashions that cover up the body, but they're not doing it to right former wrongs. They have other motivations. Hafsa Lodi, author of Modesty, a Fashion Paradox, explains. As a fashion enthusiast who doesn't wear a hijab but has always tried to dress modestly from the neck down, I've waited for mainstream acceptance of modest fashion for over two decades. I never anticipated seeing a whole Wikipedia page dedicated to modest fashion or a new story in The Guardian titled The End of Cleavage, How Sexy Clothes Lost Their Allure. Nor did I ever imagine I would type in Vogue.com and be greeted by an image of two Caucasian models in black jumpers and trench coats with their faces bordered by tight-fitting black headscarves topped off with black hats. It's clear that modest fashion is being embraced by millions of women who have no religious affiliations as well as Christians, Orthodox Jews, and Muslims. Not to mention the style movement that's gaining traction with men who are eschewing sagging pants and muscle vests for more polished looks in the name of modesty. So I can't help but ask, what is driving this trend and why is it happening now? While modesty is relevant to consumers of all faiths and backgrounds, it's retailers' preconceived notions of Muslim and Middle Eastern wealth that is the reason for modest wear skyrocketing into the mainstream over the past few years. Author Shalina Jan Muhammad, who uses the phrase Generation M to refer to the growing group of young Muslim millennials and entrepreneurs who share the characteristics of faith and modernity, points out that while Muslims may welcome the industry's increased focus on modest wear, it's not a black and white embracement of diversity. While reaching out to Muslim consumers might leave their audience with a warm, fuzzy feeling, there are financial incentives too, Shalina claims. In 2015, Muslim consumers worldwide spent around 243 billion US dollars on clothing, with around 44 billion US dollars, or 18%, on modest fashion purchases by Muslim women according to the State of the Global Islamic Economy report from Reuters and Dinar Standard. The report estimates that by 2021, Muslim consumer spending worldwide will reach 368 billion US dollars, a 51% increase from 2015. Muslims are expected to account for 30% of the global population by 2030, with more than 50% of that population aged under 25. Their spending power, attributed mainly to Middle Eastern millennials, is what the global fashion industry is now scrambling to attract. In an article about the modest fashion industry for Bustle, journalist S.I. Rosenbaum writes, Financially, its biggest engine is the global Muslim market, particularly in wealthy but devout Gulf nations with money to spend and religious standards to keep up. And so, still reeling from recurring global recessions, more brands are turning their eyes to Middle Eastern wealth. These population projections and financial motives are no secret. It's widely recognized across the globe that international fashion labels increasingly covered up runway presentations are not paying homage to Middle Eastern cultures, but rather to their deep pockets. It would be, of course, naive to ignore the fact that modest clothing is another way to market towards consumers from Muslim-majority countries with young populations and many, many petrol dollars, states Kashmir Gander in The Independent. Professor Reina Lewis, British art historian and cultural studies lecturer at the London College of Fashion, has extensively studied the contemporary evolution of modest dress. She found that, before modesty began trending, Early Islamic-based lifestyle magazines struggled to convince the press offices of fashion houses to loan them products for their fashion shoots, as they didn't view the predominantly Muslim readerships as target audiences for their fashions. Some stylists and editors had to resort to deceptive devices, like hiding the fact that their publications were in any way aligned with Muslims, to get their hands on these coveted clothes. Now, the tables have turned. It's impossible to ignore the undeniable financial potential unlocked by businesses that take special steps to cater to Muslim consumers. 
As I reach my 30s, after gaining a master's in Islamic law from the University of London School of Oriental and African Studies and working for a decade as a fashion journalist in the Middle East, I'm often finding it difficult to reconcile my two worlds. Though at the age of 14, I believed modest is hottest to be a catchy, clever, and relevant slogan that summed up my worldview, the social media obsession that many fellow millennials are afflicted with has led me to question the way in which the modest style revolution has used digital means to communicate its message to consumers worldwide. In Islam, modesty is encouraged to promote a certain veil of privacy between men and women. But where's the privacy in sharing selfies, albeit conservatively dressed ones, on Instagram to billions of strangers? If women are using apps like Instagram to show off their skin-covering outfits, are they still embodying the Islamic ideal of modesty? Plus, there's a whole other dispute brought up by the style revolution. While hordes of fashion bloggers on social media may celebrate it, there are many women for whom the term modest fashion feels like an insult. Julie Burchill slammed the concept of modest fashion in an article for the Daily Mail. What I don't like at all is when modesty is used as a shaming stick which women use to beat other women, she writes. When applied to clothing, the word implies, by default, that any other form of dressing is immodest, that is, tardy, exhibitionist, and wrong. The argument is not a solely Western one. Many women of Asian and Middle Eastern heritages, for whom modesty may have been strictly enforced in their own upbringings, are staunchly against using the word modest to promote a certain way of dressing. Gita Sagal, a prominent Indian writer on feminism, fundamentalism, and women's rights, claims, whether they know it or not, the global fashion business is marching in step with Islamists when they create lines of modest clothing, as opposed to a range of choices for women and girls. Islamists promote hijab for political reasons. The fashion industry complies to make money. It is a nasty alliance, claims Iranian activist Maryam Namazi, who says that modesty culture teaches girls from a young age that if they fail to dress modestly, they will become vulnerable to violence from predatory men who are unable to resist sexual urges. Women have been fighting modesty rules for as long as the rules have existed, but what is worrying is the return to the mainstream of modesty rules, albeit packaged in a lovely silk chiffon. Whether via acid attacks or Dolce & Gabbana adverts, the message is clear. A good woman is a modest one. Some women argue that the modest styles currently in vogue appear overtly elitist and are only suited to certain body types and budgets. Only those blessed with the privileges money and slim looks bring, these women seem to suggest, could get away with wearing a dress that evokes virginal drabness at best and cult-style patriarchal oppression at worst, writes Naomi Fry in a New York Times-style magazine feature titled Modest Dressing as a Virtue. She points out that popular television show The Handmaid's Tale, based on the novel by Margaret Atwood, uses modest clothing, namely long-sleeved ankle-length dresses and cloaks, in addition to head coverings for handmaids and servants, to connote obedience and submission. While it may be true that in some Middle Eastern and Asian communities, conservative dress is enforced upon women, be it by their governments or patriarchal families, many women in the West are adamant that dressing modestly, whether that includes a headscarf or not, can be liberating. Personal interpretations of modesty vary among different women, but the resounding message at the crux of the movement is one and the same. Choosing to cover up is a matter of personal choice. Women who opt for more layers and fabrics over the comparatively bare offerings in stores are making the profound decision to take ownership of their bodies rather than succumb to Western societal pressures that deem a woman's body or her hair to be her ultimate beauty, which she should use to attract men. And the modest silhouettes that are now infiltrating storefronts are providing these women with an abundance of stylish options. Their covered-up outfits need not be dull, ill-fitting, or uninspiring. Instead, they can exude character and confidence, with the layers, colors, patterns, and accessories combining to create an armor that's fashioned from motives far more meaningful than frivolous trends. Soon after the September 11 terrorist attacks, New York's Democratic Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney donned attire that is worn by a minority of Muslim women, influenced by the countries where they live and the cultural dress norms handed down from them. That was Hafsa Lodi, reading an extract from her new book, Modesty, A Fashion Paradox, published by Neem Tree Press. The book is available to buy at a discount from the book launch online shop at booklaunch.london slash sales.